Hi David. Good news. I got my pens fixed. I took them back to the store and they gave me new ones and they're all the right colours now. Yay! Okay, so what's happened since the last time we spoke? Oh, lots actually. I got a bunch of these. Filaments. I don't know why they came in bags like this, but whatever. They're all the warm light ones. That's exciting. Lots of those. I got a whole bunch of ICs, which I'm not even going to open because I'm not using them anymore. What? No, that's it. I've decided I'm not using them. So what am I doing instead? Well, I've come up with a new plan. So I thought to myself, we're going to have a, a board, right? See, it's green this time. It's actually really green. We're going to have a board and the board's going to have all these filaments on it, right? It's going to have one here. Oh, need a longer one. Here. Here. Let's see if I can do this first time. Here. And it's going to have one here. I've got to stop saying here, right? Like that. And it's going to have chips on there and all sorts of stuff. But ultimately, it's going to have to be driven by a microcontroller, right? I mean, there's no way of actually passing logic to this, no matter what chips we're using on board. We're going to have to control it with a microcontroller. So if we have a microcontroller over here, it doesn't really matter what it is, right? We're going to need wires going across towards it. Now, we're going to need VCC. Yeah, that's obvious, right? That's red. And we're going to need ground, or well, let's call that black. Yeah? Now, your way, or my other way I was thinking, is going to require anywhere between three and potentially, I'll just do another colour just in case, five extra wires to control this. And then, if we had two of them, we're going to need to pass a wire there. Wow, this is getting really tiresome with all these different colours. A wire there. We're going to need one, two, three and potentially four or five. That's a lot of wires. A lot of wires. So I had a problem with that. Not because a microcontroller doesn't have enough I.O. to do that. It's not that. It's just a lot of wire passing between the different digits and if we've got a lot of digits, it's a lot of wire. So I wanted to minimize the amount of wire between the digits and potentially just minimize the amount of work to control the digits. I didn't want to have to worry about passing on latching between the different chips and stuff blah 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 blah. So I have decided to use a different chip. I am going to use dun 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 it's called the MCP 20 no 23017 and that is well let's just look at it shall we here it is, much easier. It is a 16-bit I.O. expander with serial interface. What does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. It is 16 GPIOs that can handle full PWM and it runs off I squared C. Woohoo! So what does that mean? That means that we only need four wires. We're going to need VCC, that's pink, who cares, we're going to need ground, we're going to need SCL, and yeah, another colour, who cares, we're going to need SDA, and that's it! That's all we need, four wires. How cool is that? So how does that work then? Well, let's switch pages and find out. So we have a chip and the chip has got 28 pins. Holy moly. 14 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, <laughs> uh, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is shocking. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 
Whoop. Zoop. There we go. There's our chip. We we should label it so everyone knows what we're talking about. For all those people that jumped ahead. MCP 23017 by Microchip. Now, what's cool about this chip is that these last three pins here are address pins. And so what you can do is you can have eight of these by having set in different addresses. 0000, 0001, 010, 011, etc. All the way through to 111. So that's eight of them. So that means my way would be limited to just using up to eight digits, which I think will suffice for pretty much most people's use cases. Eight digits is a lot of digits. So what's nice about these is I can just have the four wire chaining between them all and use I squared C to communicate with them. And because I've got full 16 GPIOs on this chip, I can control each LED individually and with full PWM. So not only can I turn them on and off via I squared C, but I can adjust their brightness. Or I can do fancy things like make them flicker. I'm very excited by that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So lucky enough, I already had one of these chips. Ta-da! Why did I have one? Well, I bought one of these chips from Adafruit last year for a project that never got off the ground because I had no idea what I was doing on the project and clearly it was never going to work to start with, but that's okay. I had one of these chips left. I've got an 8 port one and a 16. So this is the 16, all wired up, fancy schmancy, and if I go get some power and I plug power in, we should see... Da, 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 da. I'm controlling a whole bunch of segments. I've got 14 different LEDs that I'm flashing. I'm just doing them in order. The reason I've got 14 is we've got 13 segments and I'm thinking of sticking an LED on there, just an individual LED for a decimal point. So it's really easy to use. So let, let's have a, a look at what we've got here. Okay, so our chip is buried inside all these wires over here. I've got two pull-up resistors on the SDA and SCL ports because there aren't pull-ups on this. So you, with I2C you should normally pull them up. They're both 10K resistors. I've got one 10K resistor going all the way to ground over here. And I've got each one of these connected to that same ground line. So right now I've only got the one resistor just for testing purposes now because I'm only turning one LED on at a time. And I've got different colors just because I didn't have enough of one color. I need to buy myself some more LEDs. And that's basically it. It's just running through the microcontroller and I'm just using the I2C bus to this chip to tell it to turn GPIOs on and off just using digital writes at the moment and I could be using analog writes just as easily. So I'm going to go this way because it makes building a library very easy. It means I can control, as I said, the brightness of each filament individually or as a whole. I can do effects like make them flicker if I want to, or I just turn the brightness down or brightness up. And it also means that I've got a very easy way of controlling them all through I2C. So this is the way I'm going. Now, I still have to decide if I'm going to be raising the filaments off the board or not. I haven't gone into the design phase of the PCB yet because I wanted to solve what I was going to do for an IC, and I have done that. Now, it's, it's a rather long chip. As I said, it's got 14 pins on each side, but it is a through-hole chip, which is great. So it'll stick with the whole retro theme. You can get surface mount versions, but obviously we don't want to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start designing now using this chip. Let's go back to the schematic. As you can see, it's got 16 IOs. By default, they're all set to inputs, but you just set them to output. There is a, an SPI version of the chip, but I'm going to go with the I2C. SPI obviously needs an extra wire, and it also means that technically you could have more boards with the SPI bus, but I'd have to run way more wires to be able to control each one individually. In terms of performance, like speed of the chip, perfectly fine. We're not doing high speed uh, change of display. As I said, three hardware addresses, so you can adjust which particular chip you're talking to. You can also um, set interrupts for them, but in this case we don't need it. We're just using all the pins as outputs, but technically you could actually use them as inputs and set up an interrupt and not have to be polling the inputs all the time, which is kind of cool. That's uh, into A and into B. And what else on here do we need to worry about? Oh, something that's very cool is it 
can run through a massive range of voltages. So that's a big advantage as well. So there it is. That's what I'm using. They're about $1.50 each, I believe, if I buy them in lots of 10 or 15. Well, that's $1.50 before the US tax. So who knows what's going to happen there. But I think that's a fairly reasonable price considering this one chip does the whole thing and all I need is a couple of extra resistors, some filaments, and the board. So, what do you think, Mr. Watts? Are you happy with me using this? The chip's a little big. I'm gonna see if I can find a smaller version because let's face it, you know, compared to the size of the filaments, I think that chip's gonna be way too big. I'm just impressed that I got my colored pens working to be honest with you. Anyway, I look forward to hearing how you're going to solve your hardware design. That's it. Scratch you later.